Today I am sharing with you 10 of the best desserts that I have ever made. And I'm gonna be honest, most of my treats consist of chocolate chips that are secretly eaten in the pantry when my kids aren't around. That's like my safe area. So I'm curious, what is your choice of treat? Is it chocolate? Is it peanut butter? Is it something like sour? Mine is chocolate, but I would love to hear yours. Now when it comes to food, I get it. You can be a little picky, but when it comes to dessert, man, I'm not picky at all. I will literally eat whatever's in front of me. So that is why I'm gonna share with you my 10 best desserts. I hope you guys love them. The first one I'm making is my mom's no-bake cookies. You're first gonna start by adding two tablespoons of butter. You're gonna melt that over medium high heat on your stove top. Then you're gonna add a half a cup of milk and then two cups of sugar and just dump that right in. Now we're going to mix this all together just so it doesn't burn on the bottom of your pan. Next add two tablespoons of cocoa powder and then you're gonna add just a little bit of vanilla. So it's about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of vanilla. A little bit of salt and then go ahead and mix that all together. Now once that starts to boil, go ahead and pull it off the stovetop and you're gonna add 3 fourths cup of peanut butter. You can add creamy or chunky, whatever you prefer. And then mix that in until everything is nice and smooth. Next, add two cups of instant oatmeal or quick oats while your chocolate is still hot because we want to be able to mix that really well together. Once that starts to dry, it's going to start to harden up, so we want to do it <laughs> while it's hot. Now, I love using cookie scoops when I scoop out these cookies because then I don't have to burn my fingers and they're all nice and even and proportional and you, you get what I'm saying. I like to scoop them out on foil so the cleanup is nice and easy and then you just let them dry. Once they're dry, they harden and they are absolutely delicious. Next up is our no bake eclair cake. So we have three and a half cups of milk that we already poured in just to make our lives a little easier. Next we're gonna add like, it's a 3.4 ounce of the French vanilla Jello. So we're gonna put it in, it's like the instant pudding. You wanna pour that one in for me? Okay. okay. We're gonna mix these in first. Then we're just gonna mix it up real quick. <laughs> All right, so once this is mixed, we're gonna put it in the fridge for a few minutes, let it set up, because we're, we're really making like the pudding out of it. So, so our pudding is all nice and stiff, and so we're ready to put in the Cool Whip. Do you wanna put that in, and I will mix it with the beaters? Okay, what size is this? Eight ounce container of Cool Whip. Nice, and you can get the light, you can get any kind, it will still work and taste good, so. Can't go wrong. Pudding, Cool Whip. I think Cool Whip might be one of my most favorite <laughs> foods. <laughs> all right, so once it's all done, it will be a little bit runny. I mean, it's still thick, but it will thicken up as you put it in the fridge or freezer, yeah, depending on how quick up. you need it. This is the part of the eclair cake, is graham crackers and this, and that's about it. So. I was surprised I when I found out that it was a graham cracker right? bake. Because something happens, like the consistency or something changes, changes when you... Yeah, and it really makes it, t it just has a different flavor to it, so. It's a two-man job. Actually, we're gonna do it so you can <laughs> see. Okay, here we go. Sure, that's half, right? Close enough. Okay, so I'll just kind of push it off. It smells like favorite. childhood. It does smell like childhood. <laughs> These are most recipes we make on here uh, smells like childhood. Summer and childhood. Our mom was a good cook. And you really won't be able to tell where the breaks are on this recipe mm -hmm. because... And so then we'll just do one more layer of the graham crackers. That will be the top. Okay, so after all the graham crackers are on, you put on your favorite frosting. Now this is my mom's homemade chocolate frosting and it's amazing. I'm not gonna show you how I make it, but I'll put a link in the description for you so you can find it there. Or if you don't like to make frosting, if you wanna make this recipe really easy, you can just grab a can of chocolate frosting and just carefully spread it on and it will taste delicious. I'm gonna spread it around. Now there are some parts where there's no graham cracker. You're just gonna put the frosting right over it like there is graham cracker and it will be just fine. Kids are just gonna tear exactly. through this. They're just gonna fine. eat it. All right, so let's stick this in the fridge for about an hour or so. Number three is our mini Oreo cheesecake. Go. So we've got two eight ounce blocks of cream cheese that have been softened. You'll want these to be softened because you're gonna beat them and it's gonna be a lot easier if they're not 
cold and right out of the fridge. So just blend it until it starts getting fluffy. You'll keep mixing it in a minute. Okay. And then you're gonna add two and a half cups of powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. And this whole recipe calls for one package of Oreos. But you're gonna set 12 aside to go in the bottoms of the cheesecake. Okay. And then you're gonna turn the rest into just Oreo cookie crumbs. So t we took the cream out took, and just yes. did it into the crumbs. Perfect. And then we reserved some of the crumbs to put on top. Yep. So it really is just a few ingredients, but you kind of separate a little yeah. bit as you go. Perfect. So that's it for the cream cheese filling. Okay, but you can get her. It's all mixed together. So now I think we're ready to assemble the cheesecakes. Okay, um, so it's just a whole Oreo, right? Yep. Okay, now it, the, the Oreo doesn't fit exactly in the bottom, but that's okay because it's just gonna freeze over and, hmm, let me see. Yeah. It really won't make that big of a difference. Okay. So now you can use a spoon and do this, but we're gonna just use cookie scoop because then they'll all be even and it will make our lives a whole lot easier instead of like using your finger to get it out. And then it, it just... doesn't get on the edge too. You don't have yes. to clean it up. Yes. Okay, so after she puts the filling in, I'm just gonna spread it around to try and fill up that cup. And it's okay if it's not perfect, but it will go a little bit over the top. So just kind of press it down in the middle so it covers the whole Oreo in the base. So my husband loves this recipe, and he thinks that it's like a lot of hard work to make this <laughs> recipe when Actual really <laughs> cheesecake, right? <laughs> like yeah, it's like three ingredients. Yeah, that's all. That's my kind of cheesecake, exactly. Because real cheesecake, I don't have the patience to be dealing with. It's it's a lot. I know. It's a lot. And this is good for summertime too, where it, you just stick it in the freezer instead of having to wait for it to cook for an hour or however long. Exactly. Cheesecake takes quick and easy. Perfect. All right, while well, she's finishing up there, I'm gonna take these lovely Oreo crumbs and just kind of sprinkle them on top of each one just to make them a little fancier. I mean, you don't have to do this step, but. Yeah, plus it covers up if you weren't very good at spreading like I was. You did great. A little garnish. A little garnish, there we go. It's for the garnish. So after you've got all the extra Oreo cookie crumbs on top, we're just gonna put them in the freezer, probably for about an hour till they set up. Okay. And they're solid, good to go. Perfect. Oh, I'm excited. Number four is our s'mores bark. This one is so good. So first we're gonna take just a bag of chocolate chips. You can use any brand. We like to use Hershey's brand. Just, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I feel like it melts well too. Yeah, and if you like dark chocolate, you can make this with dark, but I like milk chocolate. All right, so we're gonna stick this in the microwave and go about every 30 seconds, we're going to stir until it's completely melted. Okay, so everything's all melted, ready to go. Now we put some parchment paper down. I've also done wax paper. You can do foil paper, maybe spray it. Now you can make this as thick or thin as you want. You can add more chocolate chips, um, but we're just doing the two cups today. Spread this th thin. I like it thin because it's more of a bark. Yeah. Okay, you can add the next stuff. Okay, so we're just topping it with graham crackers that have been broken up in the chocolate. Okay. Yes. All right, while you do that, I'll do some marshmallows. Kind of just do it in your cracks. Part about fire, it your is. hair absorbs all the smell. It is. So now that we got most of it, I'm just gonna go and just like pat everything down. Just so it won't fall apart as you're breaking apart your bark. So to finish off the s'mores bark, we just need some marshmallow cream. Just use about half this container and you're going to soften it in the microwave until it is runny enough that you can kind of drizzle it on top as a garnish. So this was 20 seconds in the microwave. You can see it's a little puffy. Now it's it's a little hard to drizzle, but it'll come. So I, yeah, I kind of just did that and then it doesn't have to be pretty because it's bark. It doesn't matter, so. And that's, that's, that's literally all there is to it. So we're gonna stick this in the freezer. It works better in the freezer because it hardens a lot faster. Because mm -hmm. if it's kind of warm in your house, the chocolate will get a little soft. So okay. it, I would suggest keep it in your freezer before you're ready to serve it. All right, stick it in. Okay. okay. So we took our s'mores bark out of the freezer, broke it up into pieces. You can see they're not uniform. They don't have to be perfect. Number five is Reese's fudge. Now, if you love Reese's, you're gonna love this one. So you're gonna take a nine by nine 
square pan, line it with foil, and then spray it with non-cook cooking spray. Then you're gonna take your Reese's. I had a very good helper helping me today. We're gonna do 16 on the bottom of the pan. Next, you're gonna take three cups of chocolate chips and then just dump them into a microwave safe bowl. Now you could do this on the stove top also, but I love using the microwave. Then you're gonna take one can of sweetened condensed milk and just pour it in over your chocolate chips. Then I like to microwave in 30 second increments and then stir in between each 30 seconds, then stick it right back in the microwave. Now once everything is melted, it's starting to get a little bit thick, this is how we like it. So now it's time to put it onto your Reese's. We're making the rest of the fudge. Go ahead and pour it on very gently. The Reese's might come up a little bit as you're spreading, so just try and hold them down as you spread. Now it's time for the topping, and of course, it needs to be Reese's. So I started out with 22 Reese's. I put 16 on the bottom, and the rest I am just crumbling up and I'm pressing down into the fudge so when it cools and hardens, the Reese's will be stuck in there. Now I let this sit in the fridge for about an hour and a half, and it is hardened and ready to go. So I carefully pull away my foil, and then you can cut right into it. Now I love this fudge because you don't need a candy thermometer and it actually keeps its shape pretty well. I also love that you can see the Reese's on the bottom and on the top. Now whenever I make this fudge, it is gone instantly. Number six, if you're looking for something a little bit healthier, this is my favorite cookie. These are skinny banana cookies. So I have two bananas here that I'm just smashing with a fork. You can use a blender or a beater's too, whatever makes it easiest for you. Now once it is nice and soft, you're going to add one cup of old-fashioned oats into the mixture. Then you're going to add about a fourth a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips or milk chocolate chips, whatever one you choose. Then you're going to mix it well. It's going to take a minute to get everything wet, but just give it some time. Again, I'm using my cookie scoop because I love using it, they're all uniform, and they all cook the same. So that's why I love using a cookie scoop. Now you're gonna cook this at 350 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes until they harden up and they are cute little banana cookies. Number seven is one of my favorite no-bake treats. It's caramel pecan turtle pumpkin pie. This is a game changer. Now on the bottom of our graham cracker crust, we're gonna add about a third cup of caramel. Can you see that? Yeah. And we're actually just going to pour it whoop, all over, pretty much until it is covered. Then I kind of just spread it around a little bit. Guys, okay, that's gonna be amazing. Ooh, I'm excited. Next, I'm gonna take a half cup of pecans. Now it says chopped. These are still some bigger chunks because I like it that way on my turtle pie. So you're just gonna spread these into your caramel or caramel or whatever you wanna call it. Don't judge me, just know that's what it is. It still tastes the same. Next, we're gonna add two packages of vanilla pudding mix. So these are 3.4 ounces, so you're gonna add two of these. So it'll be just over like 6.8 ounces. Then you're gonna add one cup of milk to the pudding. Then just go ahead, mix this all together. It's gonna be thick, that's how we want it. Then you're just gonna add one cup of pumpkin puree, and we're just gonna mix this all together. Okay, this is pretty mixed. Now we're just gonna add about one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of nutmeg. We're just gonna add some flavor to this. Mix it all together. Then you're just gonna slowly put this on. Now the caramel is really loose and soft, so you kinda wanna do it in chunks so it will be easier to spread. All right, then we're gonna put about a cup and a half or so <laughs> of Cool Whip on or whipped cream, whatever you like. I love Cool Whip. That's my favorite thing. You're just gonna gently spread this all over the top. All right, so then we're just gonna put this little lid on, then we're gonna refrigerate it for two hours. We want everything to just combine together. All right, let's cut into this. Oh man, I'm so excited. Oh, that thing is thick. Number eight is our caramel marshmallow rice crispy balls, and we made these all together as sisters. For this recipe, you'll need a bag of big marshmallows, and I'm talking the big kind. You'll need 14 ounces, or just one bag of caramels that you have 
unwrapped the caramels. Please don't cook these with the plastic on. Next, you'll need one can of sweetened condensed milk. This is 14 ounces. Then you'll need five to seven cups of Rice Krispie cereal, two tablespoons of butter, and my secret for this recipe is bamboo skewers. All right, Camille is going to make this recipe for us today. Nope. Okay, so I've got a little saucepan, and I'm gonna add some butter. It's pretty warm, you want this to be on low. Caramels are pretty finicky, and you don't want them to burn, so keep it on low heat. Then I'm gonna add a whole can sweet and condensed milk. Then just mix it all together. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on this because it will start to burn quickly. Okay, Lauren is now <laughs> trading places with Camille. She took over the caramel job. Yes, we car are almost there. We're just waiting for the last few caramels to melt and then we're good to go. It took how many minutes or so do you think it took to? Probably mm -hmm. like six or seven minutes until it was all melted together. Okay. We kept it on a pretty low heat. Nice. Looks good. All right, should we skewer the marshmallows? Yes, let's do it. All right, time to skewer. So we have our little skewers, have a little marshmallows. Laura, are you gonna help me? Yes. Let's do this. All right, ladies, let's see it done. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mel. We're going full dunk. Ooh. Dip your mellow and then into just the plain Rice Krispies. Yep. The more the barrier. Gonna let it rest. Yep. Now when you serve these, you're gonna take the skewer out, but right now we are using the skewer because it makes it a lot easier to dip. This is like the tip that Disneyland uses, right? I yeah. see that big skewers. <laughs> Number nine is our three ingredient pumpkin cookies. I make these when I need a treat very fast. First we're gonna add about 15 ounces, so about a half a can of this big one, this is 30 ounces, of pumpkin puree. Not pumpkin by mix, pumpkin puree. Then you're gonna add one package of spice cake mix. And then just a cup of chocolate chips. I like to use milk chocolate chips, but you can use whatever kind you like. And I am eyeballing, so probably doing more than a cup, because really, you could always have more chocolate chips. Scoop it with a spoon and then just kind of put on a blob, just like that. It will work either way, but I love the cookie scoop because I don't have to touch anything, super easy. So usually if I'm giving the cookies away, my secret is I'll put a few chocolate chips just on top to make it look, you know, like there's tons in there and it just makes them look better. We're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for about eight minutes. And number 10, my most favorite one that I could eat literally every week is Lunch Lady Peanut Butter Bars. Now, if you love these desserts, I have more for you. These are my three ingredient desserts right there. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.